Welcome on the sixth video on this power supply repair series as done by the donkey. In today's video we're gonna focus on linear regulators which are used in every type of power supply. Let us start out with a very simple experiment where here I'm providing 12 volt from an ATX power supply. The negative rail is this black cable going to a 12 volt incandescent light bulb and then the positive terminal of the power supply is going through a push switch and then through this red cable going again to the incandescent light bulb. This is the circuit diagram of this super simple setup. So here is then the plus 12 volt DC coming in. The negative rear goes to the lamp. The positive rear goes through this push switch again going to the lamp. So then what is gonna happen when I'm gonna push this button which is a switch between the power supply and the light bulb where obviously the light bulb gonna turn on and of course it gonna give me light at full power since the power supply is 12 volt rated and also the lamp is 12 volt rated. Here is the circuit after we have pushed now this power button. As you see there is clearly a current flowing through the circuit and that is because if we would measure the voltage on the terminals of the lamp what we would find is that there is 12 volt DC here being applied just as the one what we are feeding in from the power supply. This current causes the filament to heat up and and this heat then gonna emit light. Now then what is gonna happen when I release this push button? Well obviously the light gonna go off. Of course you may ask what was the point of this experiment? Come on that was really really simple. Well I told you it is simple. However if we pay a little bit more close attention to this experiment you might have been able to notice that after I push down the button the light does not come on with full brightness right away. Also when I release the button it takes a little bit of time for the filament to cool down so it still emits light even after I have released the button and there is no power going through the circuit. In order to show you this effect I'm gonna repeat the experiment and now pay really more close attention to the filament and to the switch. So after I push it down it takes a fraction of a second to fully heat up. Now I'm gonna release the switch. As you see it takes also a fraction of a second to cool down and this delay is due to the heat or thermal energy and as I will show you this small delay is the one which allows us to use the basic idea behind pulse width modulation. Okay after this experiment let us go back to the simple circuit diagram and let me ask you a question. Namely what would you change in this circuit in order to make this bulb give only half the amount of light instead of the current full power? And I can hear your thoughts. Some of you might have said well if this is a 12 volt lamp then we just gonna change here the power supply and we gonna provide 6 volt DC instead of 12 volt. So we gonna get half of the light output. Which is yeah it's a valid solution. However in real life most of the time we cannot really change the incoming power voltage. Instead we need to do some other trickery. So practically we have established that we cannot play around with the incoming voltage. So what else would you change then? And I can again hear your thoughts. Namely most people most probably said well okay we then gonna include an extra resistor in series with the light bulb. After pushing the power button there will be a current flowing through the circuit which is shown here by this green arrow and due to this current flow there will be a voltage drop on the resistor and of course a voltage showing up on the terminals of the lamp. If we would calculate the value of this resistor such that there is a 6 volt drop on the resistor meaning that we dissipate half of the power on the resistor so that there is only half of the power left for the lamp we would get only half of the light output coming from the lamp. We can see that this idea is totally valid and it totally works and that is what we call nowadays a series regulator. 
This type of arrangement is being called a series regulation because, as you see here, we have a type of resistive element which is then put in series with the actual device on which we would like to regulate the voltage. You might have asked if I have only now half of the voltage here, or in this case the device is a lamp and I have half of the power going to the lamp, then what happens with the rest of the power? And that is an excellent question. Namely, the other half of the power which is not coming to this device is actually then being dissipated in form of heat on our resistive element which is in series with the actual device. Ok, so after we have now the basic idea behind us for the series regulation, let me ask you this question. What you would change in this circuit to get only now one third of the light output coming from the lamp? If you need a bit of time, just pause the video, think about it, then I will proceed now further. So to get only one third of the power, we can do the simple math, one third of 12 volt means that we're gonna need to pump in only 4 volt coming to our lamp, so the rest of it will need to be dissipated on our resistive element, so this means 12 volt minus 4 is equal than 8 volt DC, so this 8 volt DC will show up on the two terminals of my resistive element, and now when I multiply these voltages here with the current which is flowing through the circuit, then I would be able to calculate the real power which is then being dissipated on the resistive element and which is going to my actual device. Since this resistive element is in series with my actual device, it means that this current which is flowing through the circuit will be the same over the full circuit no matter where I measure it. For the sake of simplicity, let us assume that there is one amp of current flowing through this circuit here, which of course makes the math rather simple, so it will mean that if I multiply now 8 volt with 1 amp, that is 8 watt is being dissipated in form of heat on my resistive series element, and then 4 volt times 1 amps is equal 4 watt comes to my actual device. So in total we're gonna consume 12 volt times 1 amp which is 12 watt of power and as you see only 4 watt is making it to my actual device which means that technically speaking I'm losing 66% of the power in form of heat and that is because 8 watt is just heating now this resistive element and this means that I'm losing first of all power, second the second thing is, I need to build in some form of cooling for this resistive element, otherwise it would catch fire. So based on the previous discussion, let us talk now in terms of real life. Let us assume that this 12 volt DC here is coming from a lead acid battery and if you look up the specifications for a lead acid battery, you will see that when it is fully charged it is providing about 14 volt DC instead of 12 volt DC and when it is being discharged a little bit then the voltage might drop down to up to 11 volt DC instead of this 12 volt DC after we take into consideration that the voltage might change over time which is then being fed into the input of the circuit, we can clearly see that this type of simple resistive kind of serial regulation have several issues. So we already addressed that first of all we are losing lot lots of power and we are losing this power in form of heat so we are gonna need cooling of this element that is one of the major issues. The second major issue is related to the fact which I just mentioned mentioned namely over time the input voltage might change slightly and this slight change will totally mess up our calculations of this resistor here and that is because if we calculate the value of this resistor now based on the maximum voltage when the battery is fully charged as an example then everything is good for a while and then our device will no longer work. 
in contrary, if I calculate the value of this resistor for a somewhat depleted value of the battery voltage, then when I will fully charge up the battery, then my device gonna burn up because it is receiving way too much power. The most hand-waving solution for this problem would be that we need to then change the value of this resistor such that we compensate for the change of the incoming voltage so that our device always receives the same amount of power. This means that here we actually need to use a somewhat specialized so-called variable resistor. Before we go into the transistor and high power applications, we need to mention that actually for low power applications we use a somewhat different solution we gonna pick here a fixed value of this resistor and in addition to the resistor we also gonna use an extra element namely a Zener diode a Zener diode is a special type of diode and by the factory they are able to tune these Zener diodes such that they will make a specific voltage across the anode and the cathode electrode whenever they are so called reverse biased as you can notice from this diagram, the Zener diode is put in parallel with my device in which I would like to regulate the voltage to a specific value and practically this means that I can just go to a catalog and out of a catalog I can search for a specific Zener diode with a specific Zener diode voltage then this Zener voltage will be the one which will appear on my device and then this voltage here will be really stable even if I change the input voltage and that is because the extra power will be dissipated on this fixed resistor just as what we discussed earlier and the Zener diode will take care that the voltage is always stable as I have already mentioned to you this Zener diode with a fixed resistor is only working for low power applications and that is because factories are not making Zener diodes above 3 or 5 5 watt or so and even those are considered to be high power Zener diodes and they are very pricey so it means that whenever I need more than 3 to 5 watts of power on my device then I clearly need a completely different type of solution. It is easy to see that in real life we need to use here a even more complicated device instead of a variable resistor and it is called a transistor. In this example I'm using a so-called NPN bipolar transistor. Don't worry about it, we're not gonna go into detail in this video. If you remember our resistor was here in series with the device. Now we have the transistor in series with the device but notice that we have actually a third pin in contrast to the resistor which as you remember it had just two pins now we have these three pins. The main idea is that we can use now this third pin which is called a base in this particular transistor. We can feed in on this third pin a driver signal and through this driver signal we can practically decide what kind of resistor value should this transistor represent. So at the end of the day the transistor here is nothing else but a resistor where the resistor value changes as a function of the base driver voltage. So now if we would try to do the same like previously we did with the resistor, so to get only one third of the power going to our device, we just need to set up this driving signal going into the base of the transistor such that the equivalent resistor which shows up here between these two other pins, which are in parentheses by the way are the collector and this one here is the emitter in the case of a bipolar transistor what you see here here the resistor value which will then show up here is equivalent to a resistor that the voltage drop will be 8 volt just like previously when we had here a simple resistor. This means that if our supply voltage here changes a little bit over time all what we need to do is just simply change the driving signal here according to the change in the supply voltage such that this drop here between the 
the collector and the emitter electrodes is then compensating for the change in the input voltage. So if the input voltage as an example will increase to 14 volt then all what we need to do is that we just need to drop here 10 volt whereas if the input voltage decreases to 11 volt then we need to drop here this voltage to 7 volt instead of 8 volt. And since we have here this driver signal we can easily change this over time. In addition to this we can also change the outgoing voltage which is going to our consumer device simply by changing this driver signal here. So as an example if I want to get now 50% of the output power then I will just simply need to change the driver signal such that the equivalent resistor value here showing up between the collector and the emitter is then equivalent to dropping 6 volt and that means that I'm receiving only 50% of the power. Some of you might be thinking wait a minute if this voltage here is changing over time a little bit then how can I produce now a really stable driving signal going into the base of the transistor. As you remember a couple minutes ago we have introduced the Zener diode and we have mentioned that we can use this specialized diode to generate really stable voltages by using a series resistor in series with the Zener diode. Due to this arrangement there will be a stable voltage here at this point and we can use this stable voltage to feed it in as driver signal on the base of my transistor. So at the end of the day all what happens is the following. We use here this portion of the circuit to generate a stable voltage, a so called reference voltage. Then we feed this reference voltage into the base of the transistor store the transistor will act as a high power variable resistor in series with my device and the value of this high power variable resistor is then defined by this voltage here with which we are driving it. Since this voltage here is stable then also the output voltage will need to be stable as well. In reality of course this circuit is a little bit more complicated but for the very basic ideas I would say that this is close enough. Whenever you are buying an integrated circuit as a linear regulator, as an example the LM317 or the 7805 which are really highly typical regulators used in every day, then you are gonna have three pins of such regulator integrated circuits. And now if you would open somehow that integrated circuit that is exactly what you would find inside roughly. You would find a voltage reference with a really stable Zener diode. In addition to this voltage reference you are gonna also find a high power transistor which is then physically attached to the heatsink of the three pin devices and the three pins gonna be then equivalent to the power input like here the second pin with the power output and finally you are gonna have a third pin where you need to feed in the ground. As I have just showed you by using a transistor as the serial regulating element instead of a single resistor we can solve one of the shortcomings of the serial regulation. Namely we can simply adjust now this resistor value by adjusting the incoming signal. Although we solved the second problem I need to remind you the first problem was related to the amount of power what we lose in the form of heat. So first of all losing power is no good because we need to pay for the power. Second issue is that we need to extract the amount of heat and also we need then large heat sinks which adds to the weight and so forth and so forth. And this is why electronic engineers have been looking for an even better solution where I'm still using some sort of power transistor but I'm not losing a lot of power. To work around these power losses on the transistor they said well you know what we gonna come up with a completely different idea where we gonna use this transistor as a switching device and we gonna do something called pulse width modulation. So pulse width modulation will be then the topic for the upcoming video. Many thanks for watching.